Next up, we're going to have the uh, person who uh, curates all this, you know, puts it together for all y'all to have a good laugh while you're uh, slowly, slowly or quickly getting drunk if you got smashes, you know. The funnest thing to do is have a knife and stab the bottom of a Gordo's cup with a smash in it. Just see where, uh, see where it goes. I uh, don't know how to pronounce anyone's name like I said before. I've worked with her and known her for years, so it's just going to be Maddie. It's Maddie, weighing at 95 pounds from the red corner. Maddie. It's Maddie Ovino, you goddamn beautiful bitch. He's not lying. I work with him, you fucker. <laughs> And where's my skull? I need my skull, sorry. Not prepared, not prepared. I know what you're thinking, she looks like a slut. And I know, right? But, um, I did want everybody to dress up for Halloween. Some people didn't, as you can tell by them wearing items from my lingerie closet. Zach with the cotton candy wig, and Julian with my Gandalf costume. It's nothing sexier than Lord of the Rings, am I right? Uh, my outfit is, uh, I wanted to look slutty, but I was poor, so I just got bandages, and I'm like, fuck it, I'm a little like Egyptian mummified priestess. Or a tampon. Depending on who you ask. Yeah, that'll work. That's sexy, right? Right, fellers? I, uh, I try to look intimidating, I really do. It's like projecting, honestly. I'm really projecting because I am, I wanna look intimidating because I am the most passive person in the world like the most confrontational thing i will do is like crop dust somebody at a crowded bar and then just like run away <laughs> that's about as hard as i go i meant to have a productive day and write a really good set uh but instead i got high and watched shrek yeah um so i'm single i don't know if you guys could tell this is what happened to the last boy to leave me on red. And it kind of sucks. It kind of sucks because um, I live in a house with three girls and two of the girls, half of the house, they have boyfriends, which would be fine. It would be fine. We can't go all out and be sluts together, whatever. That's fine. I'll compromise. But it's really shitty because both of their boyfriends are amazing boyfriends. Like, they're the best boyfriends ever. They don't do anything wrong. And it's, it's annoying, it's not fair. Statistically, one of them's gotta be an asshole. Like, it's not fair. Like, I just wish one of them would just like, I'm kidding, I would never wish ill upon my roommates or anything. I just wish one of them would just like yell at her or something, you know? One of the girls with the boyfriend doesn't know how to use a lighter. I'm dead serious. She does not know how to use a lighter. She's not allowed. She hurts herself every time. You know who lights her candles? You know who lights the bong for her so she can take a rip? Me. Me. I'm the one that does it. Where's my goddamn boyfriend? Maybe it's because I'm the boyfriend. I'm my own boyfriend. <laughs> I think I would like to settle down, you know. I would like a boyfriend like theirs. Nice guy nice guy who genuinely cares about me but no i'm mostly surrounded by these fratty tallahassee fuck boys that think shop tops a craft beer that's nice it's real nice and they keep trying to touch my butthole no one warned me about that when i went to college didn't know that was a thing i didn't know i didn't know nobody tells you when, when you learn about sex and the birds and the bees, you know, nobody tells you about a wandering finger up the bee hole as they should. That wasn't in the Christian sex books that I got when I was 11. I was not prepared. 
And you know what nowadays? Guys don't even knock first. They just go right in. No common courtesy. What has the world come to? No, no, no one told me about queefing. <laughs> Knew what it was. Didn't know when it was gonna happen. Nobody tells you that it's gonna happen at the most like intimate moment of your life, like where you're so raw and exposed and it's just gonna come out and you're, and you're gonna try to crawl away and fear away from this guy that you're just so desperately trying to impress just so he'll text you back the next day. I mean, oh my God, it's fucked up. It's, fuck, it's fucked up. God damn it. You know, when I'm a mom, when I'm a parent, I will sit my daughter down. I will sit my daughter down. I will be like, baby. Baby. I want you to know that I respect you as a woman and you are free to do what you want with your body. And I think you are a beautiful goddess and I respect you and your boundaries and I trust that you will do whatever makes you comfortable. But I will have to warn you, sweetie. When you do, <laughs> you know, the S-E-X, you gon' queef. Especially if it's good, honey. Don't take it for granted, it's a telling sign. But when it happens, when it happens, my love, do not freak out, whatever you do, don't tense up, don't tense up. Nobody tells you to not tense up. Because when you do, you sound like a fucking DJ skitting on a record, like <laughs> but it, as you crawl away in fear from Chad, oh my God. And you know, what you need to do is you need to relax. You need to relax, you know? Be like uh, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Like Harry, Hermione, and Ron. You know, when they're stuck in the, the vines and they're like tangling them and just gets tired and tired. The more you freak out, the worse it gets. The more you freak out, the worse it gets. If you relax, if you just relax, if you relax, if you relax, just, just let go, let go, let your body go. It'll just like. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. My child. Because if you don't, if you freak out, your name will be listed as Chief Queef on a boy's phone for three months. <laughs> that one's personal. You all think that one's a joke. That one's... That one's <laughs> that was for my first set that I ever did from stand-up and I was like, what should I write about my life? And I was like, hmm, what has made me cry? You know, as, as you guys can see, I'm really open. I'm really open. You know, I want, I want women to do what they want with their bodies. I think it's your body, your choice. Do what you want to do. You do what you want to do. You want to get that dick, girl? Get that dick. I hate how guys are just like, she can't hit me up. I can booty call her at 2 a.m., but oh my god, she wants a nooner? Is she in love with me? <laughs> Not. Because if I liked you, I wouldn't want to just fuck you. It's a bad sign if we just try to fuck you. So ladies, if you want to get that dick, get that dick. Get that dick, go get that dick, go get the dick, dick. Go get him. Rattle his bones. Oh, that was a good one. I am proud of that. You know, I've actually made a little rap, you know, for women to hit up men. Like, you know, some nice pickup lines. Uh, you know, like something that would just, you know, a point of reference. So that way you can hit up a guy, you know, something slick, you know, kind of like under the table, like, hmm, I like a little more like, all right, so are you guys ready for it? I forgot my beanie at home. It's an extra level of touch. Whatever, it's fine. We'll go with my head. I give good head. But are you guys ready for the rap? Are you guys ready? Hey, yo, boy, let me see that schmeckle. Take off your clothes and let's wrestle. I treat your body like a piece of art as I go to town on your boy parts. If he's stressed out, I'll take away your troubles. All you gotta show me is your pee-pee and your bubbles. If you wanna get nasty, I'm with it. Watch me bop it, pull it, and twist it. That was a bop it reference. And yes, I have one on me. I stay fucking strapped. All right, I'm Maddie Avino.